this meeting to order. So do we need our name? Um, so just a note on the agenda, Ron informs me that he has about an hour's worth of executive session topics, so it would be awesome if the open meeting part could be um, done with alacrity. <laughs> so uh, work quickly. Uh, work quickly too. <laughs> Whichever comes first. So um, I accept a motion for the consent agenda, noting that we do not have the minutes for June sixth, which was the who did the oh, so, so moved. Seconded June sixth. The food Yes. Oh, so any changes or additions to the minutes? All those in favor? All right. Thank you. Um, let's start with administrative reports. I was like, what? Well, no, sorry. Wow. <laughs> already, I've, already, I've already lost track of that 70 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Easy cut, easy cut. He's not heading out of the box with us. Okay, Go for it, Tom. Let me go. Sure. Okay, I have um, uh, two letters of resignation to share with the school board. Uh, one is for Russell Williams, fifth grade teacher. That one I've known about for a little while. And then um, just recently, uh, Gail Greenleaf is uh, requesting that she uh, be released from her contract for next year, so I have copies of this to okay. pass down for people. What are the reasons now? Pardon me? Reasons? Um, uh -huh. Russell Williams accepted a position at Westminster Center School, and Gail Greenleaf is just, she's she's taking a break from teaching for a while to pursue some um, college coursework. Oh, okay. Well. And what does Gail teach? She teaches third grade. So um, we're in the process right now of um, collecting resumes and uh, Hope to start um, on interviewing for that position next week. And okay. and the uh, and Mr. Williams' position, were you? That well, you? I'll get to that now. Okay. Um, we we did do a round of interviews, and um, there's a, 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 a stack you can keep or pa pass back. Ron can keep a copy. Um, I'm recommending to the board that uh, we hire Craig Roach for the fifth grade position. His a resume here. He, he comes from um, Surrey Village Charter School. Uh, he has a very interesting background. He's very energetic, uh, very uh, tech savvy, loves garden. I think he'll be a great fit um, at Green Speed School. So I'll pass these down to put people to look at. Okay, so before you go further, we need um, a motion to accept these two resignations. So we'll move. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. With thanks for their work for us. <coughs> And we need a motion for to hire Mr. Roach. I move that we accept uh, John's recommendation and uh, allow the hire of Mr. Roach. Can we take just a second to read it? Sure. Yes. Take a second to read it. Was he teaching somewhere else? He was teaching at Surrey Village Charter School over in New Hampshire. Okay. So it seems like he's uh, he's been teaching for a few years. Yes. He, people think he's he's like fresh out of college. He is 32 years old. He's a little older than that. He just has a very youngish face. Yeah. So. Sure, people, yeah. Yeah. So I need a motion for this when you're ready. Yeah, motion. Okay. Yeah, motion. What grade are you teaching? Fifth grade. <clears throat> Second the for the motion. Any more questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 And then um, a, a second, uh, we had that, that new um, academic support um, in combined with a beat position. And uh, Diane Clouet applied for that. And so um, she, uh, we had offered her that position. So I would make that recommendation to the board to hire Diane Clouette. But she was the beat teacher. It's oh, expanded. Correct, it's expanded. but it's expanded. Oh, so we have to officially. Mm -hmm. Yes, because yeah, it's a new position where we have the academic support with the beat. 
And so that'll be at Green Street, and that will force Academy and Oak Grove to find a replacement for um, Diane. Thank you. So I move for that. Second. Second. Thank you. Any more questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Thank you. Um, I'm going to pass around. I won't go through the whole thing in great detail if you want to keep the report short, but um, this is a um, kind of a summary of our Green Mountain Star report, the work that uh, Green Street School did. So there's enough for uh, school board members and Ron to keep a copy. I think Ron may have copies of this already, but just so that you can look it over. I'll go through some of the main points of it, but it takes quite a while to get through. Mm -hmm. And I would say, as we do goal setting, when we set the date for that, mm -hmm. this is a document that you should have read over, you know, bring with you when we do the goal setting, because this would be important. And we'll do the same with Oprah over the Academy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, what you're seeing on the cover is just kind of a, a table of contents. And um, we, we had a, a tremendous amount of help from our coach for this process, Casey Merle from the Learning Collaborative, who did a great job in helping uh, us put this together. All the people in the Green Mountain Star process worked with the coach. Uh, Casey worked with a few different schools in the Southeast region, and Wendy Cohen was the other person who's worked with us. So if you look in on the second page in, there's a list of the five main focus areas that we worked on for our um, uh, restructuring and improvement plan. And they're shared leadership, student engagement and achievement, safe and healthy learning environment, family and community engagement, and professional culture. And then the pages that follow that is, is a breakdown of those five areas and gives these, these are um, indicators that we walk through in this online Green Mountain Star process. It's a little too complicated to take you through that right now. But when you see this kind of codes written under, for instance, shared leadership, when it lists like RST01 is required, these were all different indicators. We had to list through, go through a list of 65 indicators and score ourselves on them. These were indicators that related to shared leadership and we went through those, and that helped us create uh, objectives and tasks for all those areas. So this was a tremendous amount of work that our PLC committee and our Green Mountain Star work group did, and these essentially become our working action plan for the school. There's a little bit, if, if you dig into it more later, it'll make a little more sense. So on the following pages, you see the five focus areas broken down page by page. In this case, it was a really good exercise. It, 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 it linked us all to professional readings that gave us um, uh, targets to focus on for best practices uh, in the education, um, um, you know, different schools throughout education um, uh, process. And so we use that as, as a template. So we go through those, those five areas. Then, this page is just uh, three PowerPoint slides that I help, uh, that I put together for staff talking about some of the changes that we're putting in place for next year. After that is our current action plan with some areas uh, highlighted. They didn't come out on the copy machine, but um, that's because it's not a colored copier. So some of that work um, you'll see in italics um, is the work that the Green Mountain Star um, will be focusing on some of the ongoing goals that we had set. We also took uh, on this page in with this, this piece that says draft. This is what's called an, an MTSS, RTII assessment. <laughs> MTSS means multi-tiered systems of support. It's a lot of acronyms, I know, but um, that's what um, the state is referring to as kind of a lot of people seeing it superseding our EST, or Educational Support Team process. And so this was a, at a training we went to, they recommended that, that we take this self-assessment. And so the members of our PLC committee and our um, Green Mountain Star work group took this self-assessment and the pages that follow that just are a breakdown of the way we scored ourselves on that. I apologize for, again, these were in color and the, they didn't come out on the, the copy here. But this gave us, uh, if you read at the top, this page here, 
it gives us a chance, number one, on a scale of one to three, um, one represents not in place at the school, two partially in place at the school, and three fully implemented at the school. And these different areas, the chart breakdowns, coincide with the clusters from this other document. So we use that as well throughout our process. Then um, this detail, this section that says detailed report, this is a breakdown of the actual printout you get from the Green Mountain Star online process. And if you look, for instance, up here where it says continuous improvement, it, it lists the, the definition of that indicator, uh, CI01, which is continuous improvement. The school's mission statement is distinct, clear, focused on student learning, and includes the important role of the family and is used to guide school improvement. And then if we look at further down, it says how it will look when it's fully met. All decisions are purposeful. Staff and family members will know and embrace the school mission and vision. So that was something that we as a committee wrote. And then we assigned tasks to that. So this is just a sampling of a number of those um, tasks and objectives we have for the coming year. And those go on for several pages. Um, and then that's that's kind of the end of the packet. So it, it, it gives you, if you take some time, it does take a while to kind of weed through it. And in fact, even if you weren't involved on the PLC committee like Ron was, or our people in our, the rest of our committee and our Green Mountain Star work group, there was, um, it's difficult to, to uh, understand the whole process. So we did, Lyle helped us facilitate a, a couple of staff meetings where we rolled it out to the rest of staff so that people can make sense of it. But the good news is we came up with a really good document with Casey Murrow's help and the work of the staff people. And so this is really going to uh, drive our improvement efforts in the following year. Great. So it was a lot of work and uh, really thankful for all, all the help from everybody. Um, then just quickly, tomorrow and Friday we have our kindergarten orientation days. We're having two days worth. So we have about 25 kids coming, 13. Uh, or 10 in one group, about 13 or 14 in another, if they all show up. And then um, tomorrow also, the, the three town principals and Ron are attending a um, town emergency planning meeting tomorrow morning from 10.15 to 12.30. And that's just to get updates on building security, evacuation processes, and so on. Where are kindergarten members for you guys right now? Well, right now, I'm at 19.20. We're We'll, we'll see where that lands after the summer. Yeah. Green Street. Where's the academy? Um, I think we're 20 across the board at the moment. Uh, 20 plus one child plays in Dumb Street. And the intensive service program. So when they're homeschooled, they don't come to us. So 20 plus one. So we'll be talking about all of these much more. So, but thanks. Thank you. Okay. Well, um, we've been busy interviewing and hiring folks, and I have uh, two two folks to be hired. Um, I'll, I'll pass it on to her resume. The first one is Carrie Doggett, um, who we want to hire for a grade two position. Um, I'm sorry, yes, it's grade two. <laughs> um, no, I'm not, it's grade three. <laughs> grade three. I'll be okay. Um, Carrie's going to be in grade three. She has been in grade five. She's been with us for, um, for several years, all on one year contracts. We hired Carrie. Carrie was um, a year long intern from the SPARC program, the Social Justice Master's Degree program. And um, um, from there, she, we hired her as a one-year sixth grade academic support teacher. And from there, for the last two years, she's been on one-year contracts in uh, fifth grade. Um, and the opening occurred in third grade, and um, she went through a lengthy interview process and came out uh, as the candidate of choice. 
She has two master's degrees um, and is very active in the school and in, in the district. I think she's our she's the chair of the chair of the university. Yeah, so that's for grade three. And that's a permanent position. And who is she? Who she's replacing? Who is leaving? Um, it's Emily Hartz. Oh, because she left. Gilbert, right? Yes. Um, we also have a, uh, a one-year grade two position, um, and we are hiring Liz Casarella. Liz came to us this year in April, in April vacation. Um, she filled in from the vacation period until the end of the year uh, in a fourth grade position. It was a uh, medical leave for the last quarter of the year, and um, Liz came in and did an outstanding job. We uh, interviewed a number of candidates, and she is the candidate of choice for grade two. It's a one-year position. Um, that teacher is on, will be on a family leave next year. Liz um, recently got her master's degree from Antioch. We really think that they're both really good clients. The second grade teacher is on a one-year leave? Correct. For maternity leave? Yes, family leave. And Sorry. Starting when? Starting a thing. Starting a thing. Well, I started has some. Yeah. Uh, so I need a motion to accept the recommendations to hire two candidates. Mm -hmm. Is that good? Uh, okay. Any other questions? People that move around within the school, we don't have to. We do. If we do an internal transfer, that's we don't go to the board with that. We're not. Hiring them, um, we have the ability to move people within, actually within Barbara Town School District, but, but generally it's within the school. But Carrie then comes before us because. Well, she was not a permanent employee. She was on a one year contract, and come June 30th, her contract expires. She has no right to a position. So she, um, so she was not a permanent employee. So it is different. And she's had three years of one year contract. Yeah. 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 So it's it's really nice that she's yeah. being very happy. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And she's so we'd hire a one year person now for Carrie? Correct. <laughs> well not for her, but, but, no, for that but that yes, it is. So um, we that leaves us with a with an opening in a one year opening in fifth grade, um, which is the spot that was previously held by Carrie Dodd. And we um, are in the beginning of the search for that position, um, we don't, we have not interviewed anyone as of this time. And we are also searching for, we, me, Jen and I are searching for uh, a beep replacement uh, for Diane Collette. And she now has gone to Green Street, and that's a full-time position, permanent, four days at Academy, one day at Oakland. And we've been involved in the band, I think, Ron, the probably in your report, Ron, the yep. band update. Yep. Um, and just let you know, the, the work has begun at Academy for the, the flooring, the gym floor, and uh, a couple of classroom work that began in earnest. And it was a very tight schedule. Uh, completion date for the work right now is scheduled for uh, about August 15th. That's the thing. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so to go back, I still need a vote on these. Uh, we have a vote. Yeah, we have moved in a second, we had no vote. So, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Just trying to get the base. So, just to be clear, then at Green Street, you're looking for how many teachers? A grade three position. And then there's grade five, one year, plus the one that's shared. And then how many are you looking for? So, at Oak Grove, we have two career educator positions open. One is in, are you finished? I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, one is in step intensive, which is our uh, four through six step program, um, vacated by Zach Rose, who's been wonderful. Uh, moving on to bigger things, I guess. Uh, the other is a paraeducator position that is also through our step, which is emotional. Um, it helps with our behavior and emotional supports. Um, that is vacated by Logan Bonnie, who was amazing. Um, got into Brown University and started school this week. So, um, two major 
losses for us at Oak Grove, but we're confident we'll find someone that's proposing. But no professional staff positions are open. The two prior executive positions and then the beat position, which we just posted, I think, yesterday. Mm -hmm. So, um, Oak Grove, um, well, we've obviously had our K graduation and our sixth grade night, which was lovely. Um, you asked about kindergarten numbers, so I was going to report that um, we have 120 kids registered in kindergarten right now. So I say 20 plus one, the one doesn't attend Oak Grove, but it does represent the numbers from a board's perspective of how many kindergarten kids we have in Oak right now. That we know of. <laughs> They're out there. Um, so today we started our K camp, we call it, um, with our first 11 of our 20 showed up today for K camp for the next three days, which was really exciting. And they started to tour the building like we do in all mm -hmm. the schools. And, I get to know the parents and the teachers, so pretty fun, pretty fun. Um, it's a big group. And this is free to all kindergartners? Is that mm -hmm. how it works? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, John mentioned that tomorrow we have um, a 10-15 with the town. Um, I actually, at 11 o'clock, um, already have scheduled Gabe, Gabe Palazzi, who is my Homeland Security, is coming for my building to walk through, and I couldn't reschedule it, and I tried today. Um, that I got a little double book, but we'll see if I can <coughs> work something out. But it's all part of the security measures. I thought he was going to be part of that meeting, so I got I think confused. eventually he will be. Okay. So, um, but not tomorrow. Okay. Unless you bring him. I could. <laughs> the other option was to wait until he said September if he wouldn't be back again. Mm -hmm. So we had already scheduled this date. So, mm -hmm. um, lots going on. Getting the building ready. Things are cleaning up. We just finished our, I'll put a public. Oak Grove Swap is finishing up, which is where we take all the materials out of the classroom that aren't in use, and we put them out, and teachers take what they want, and then we donate to, got some wood blocks for you, all right. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and then we donate to, um, we put wood out to the local child care centers after our schools have been out, we put on the swap shop, mm -hmm. and then we are making a substantial donation to an orphanage in Haiti, based on the materials mm -hmm. we have. So, nice. That is, does that include all the lost and found clothes that we're never yeah. found? Uh, we have actually had those smelly things out for the last three weeks. So if there's a name in them, we call them. If we can wash them up and use them in the nurses, we do. Otherwise, yeah, they get donated. Uh -huh. We do the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, as it should, someone yeah. should use it. Yeah. So, yeah. I think that's, I think that's about it. Yeah. Congratulations on getting through another. Yeah. <laughs> so just in terms of hiring, let me just jump in with the instrumental music. And some of you can provide more detail than I can about the screening committee, but I know we've, we've had a screening committee which <coughs> includes Andy, John, um, not yet. On Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jill, Lyle Holiday, Tony Sperron, Zoe Sperron, uh, uh, Tom that's shotgun from the middle school, mm -hmm. uh, Deb Reswick. Anybody else? Could you say Sprite? Could you say Sprite? Yeah. Music teacher in front of the company. Um, so uh, I think there was an initial screening of uh, applications that involved Steve Rice, Tony, and Tom, and then went to the screening committee. And I think there were six interviewed. Correct. Six candidates. And um, it looks like there's going to be a second round uh, with three people coming back. And uh, what I'd like to do is uh, make sure that the board will authorize um, the uh, ability to hire because we have this interview process ending Tuesday and um, it seems like there's a very strong candidate or two and we don't want to lose the candidate. In fact, if the person is available and the committee is saying this is the person that we want. So as we have in the past, uh, we're going to need a motion to authorize hiring, and this will be one of the first hires, I believe. So we do a motion to hire just the music teacher, or, or yes. for the power of the music teacher, or are you asking for a blanket motion for I think in the past we've, we've done it for other positions. Mm -hmm. Right. They yeah. fully expect within the next summer. 10 days to be hiring a fifth grade right. teacher right. one year, yeah. and then the beat person. And this time you have to move fast. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, especially since we may not meet again until August, so we don't want to not have those positions be filled because of it waiting for us to meet. So, so, that, so anyway. I move that we authorize Ron the 
ability to hire teachers, a music teacher, on his own. And other musicians or others, right? And or other. As needed. As needed. Yeah, and it would be as recommended by the principals. Yeah, that Jane? Almost. Second for that? Second. Great. Any other questions with that? Can he play this before us? Oh. Yeah. Are part of the uh, uh, the three finalists are women. Can they play this before? That's just what it's not. Actually, we didn't hear any of them. No. no. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> or what? There was no performance, there was no performance <laughs> or, or an actual <laughs> yeah, last. Okay. So, do we have any more comments? Because we need to vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I would just ask Jill and maybe anybody else on the screen committee, those two guys. Um, do you have a sense of the and John? What's that? Screen committee? So, so what was it like, this committee? I wasn't. No, I, I'm not asking about what oh. the committee was like. Kind of the process with the candidates, if you oh, oh. a little bit, Jill? Um, well, as you said, it went through music teachers so that they could actually screen and help Lyle out. So there were over 70 or 75 candidates, which I thought was quite incredible. Mm -hmm. And then we interviewed all six. One was by Skype, the rest of them were all in person. And we had, we all submitted questions. I'd never been through part of this, maybe you guys all have already, but I thought it was really quite organized and well done. Um, including I appreciated an explanation of legalities and things that we could ask in the text. I was like to. So um, it was good, the, the entire process, we all had put an input of questions, including you know, from the music teachers, some very specific music methodology um, had questions and then from the sixth grade teacher from Green Street also the collaboration within the staff and the teaching staff, the administrative staff and with the other um, musical teaching staff and then of course with Tony being there the collaboration with the vocal music and the general music that goes on and then I came at it with some questions too from perspective perhaps as a, a parent. And so and we had one so we were very impressed by all the candidates that we did and we had really unanimous feelings as we went through that, yeah. it's, it. It's good that a committee like that in a, in a position like this that serves all three schools in a feeder system in a sense um, that there's consensus from that committee. So I was I was pleased to hear that. And I guess I'd sum it all up when I went home and said to my husband yesterday, I said, I'm actually excited. <laughs> so, um, but I, I, I don't know, even if you were excited too, but we felt like there were really qualified people that had come for. Great. Yeah, they are. Great. Finalists are great. Uh, just see the program growing. I think a big step forward for the program in elementary school. Great. Mm -hmm. It's always exciting to hear. Now we have to land. Yeah, now, yeah, so now you have to make sure that you get um, Yeah. So I am planning to attend the um, Safety Town meeting tomorrow as well. And um, on the facility side of things, we are looking at doing some major reconstructing work for the, for the chimney at Canal Street. And um, one of the preliminary bids we received is for $21,000. So it's a big, big project. Um, to remove the chimney, or? Um, it's just, it needs to be shored up and repainted. Mm -hmm. And so we're, um, we actually put that out to bid a year ago. And um, for lots of reasons, with the advice of Scott, we were able to hold out for a year. And we're, we're thinking that we actually need to go through the full bid process again, because one of the bidders came back, one of the bidders from last year, and said, oh, well, I've, looked at it more and it needs more work. So anyway, we're going to get it and we'll be working with Scott to take yeah. a look at that. Deb, is this the primary chimney at the Canal Street? Yes. Okay. And are any of the leaks that need pointing up down in the building themselves? Are any of the leaks? Any of the cracks that need pointing down inside the building <coughs> to the roof level? I don't know the level of detail okay. with that, but I, I know that it's significant and that the concern is that we need to, the chimney will fall down if we don't really, mm. yeah, no. you know, secure it. 
Okay. Is, is there added expense because of the, the historic nature of the building? I don't think that's part of it. Okay. Well, that's good news. Yeah. Yeah. Because of official historic yes. building? Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, Anytime we do any kind of um, renovations to the building, we, we have to really get the clearance of the historical commission because it is on the register. So we can do what we want basically inside, but we cannot affect anything that might change the look from the outside. But a falling down chimney would change the look from yeah. the outside. Yeah. Yeah. So. Or perhaps the security and safety of the building. Yeah, right. Um, the entire management team and our IT person, um, along with our child development assistant specialist attended a, a was kind of a mandatory training that was delivered through our regional head start office in springfield mass yesterday for two days on data the use of data the idea of collecting data and it was a really good training um, that has set us in motion and it was timely in that when we had our review in April, which by the way, we should have received that report by now, we have not. Uh, I have some indication of what's on it, but um, one of the challenges was that we have one foot in and one foot out of, become, of being fully um, computerized with our records keeping systems. And, and there are some challenges in, in that, um, for instance, the state of Vermont is not totally on board with being having everything computerized, yet the feds would like that. So we, we have those challenges. Um, this training really helped us move beyond the gray area. You know, computerization is pretty black and white, but the work that we do is gray. And so it helped us really understand how we can translate our work into useful data. And the training also was about how we can change the culture of our agency to get people to really embrace this and to engage in it. And so the consequences of that have been that um, we had two day-long strategic planning sessions yesterday and today. Uh, we being the management team, along with our IT person and our assistant child development specialist, uh, to talk about how we are going to really move the entire staff to the place that they are engaged, comfortable, and using and collecting data and putting it all in the computer. And then and then drawing that data down at pertinent times throughout the years to, to analyze it and to, and to look at what we're doing and the impact of it. And it, and it ranges. It ranges from, um, um, you know, the, 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 the classroom curriculum and children's development to what's happening with our facilities to uh, human resources information, training needs. It's, it, we, we spent most of today just talking about the entire functions of our agency and just how much of that could go into some kind of a system. And we do have a packaged system called Child Plus that's pretty popular with most of the Head Start programs in the country. So a follow-up to, and we've developed some strategic plan around that particular focus only. It took us two days to do that. We'll continue to do more strategic plan <coughs> next month. But we are going to bring in our trainers from who, who own the Child Plus system to do two days of intensive training for, for every employee, including staff and um, our family support specialists, because we want them all to be putting that data in now. So that's really exciting, and we talked about some ways to really um, get staff buying into the process. So hopefully the next time we have a review, they can a federal review, they can just click the button and it's all there and they won't be going between the computer and the paper files. So and we'll be using the information, it'll be helpful information for us on does, a regular basis. Does that also include the in kind? Yes, that's, that's a part of part of it. Yes. Uh, uh, so the every year the 
the first, the last two weeks in August, we close the agency down and do <coughs> service training. So the first two days of, um, first three days of that period of time, we will do this data focus. We'll be doing a retreat with staff, particularly around data, and then doing the child plus training that following Tuesday and Wednesday. At the end of that week, which is August 23rd, we are having our annual staff retreat at the Hermitage, and Madeline Cunin is going to be our speaker. You are all invited. Uh, August 23rd? August 23rd at the Hermitage, and she'll be speaking at 10 o'clock in the morning. And she's been delightful to, I just decided to call her one day. <laughs> and said, would you like to be our keynote? And of course, she would like a big audience. Uh, and there are 70 of us now in the ES, so there is big. room for more. And I told her that I would extend that invitation. She's written two recent books. They will be available. There will be a book signing um, <laughs> event attached to that. And she's going to talk about the importance of working with families and the impact that we have starting uh, with our work at a very tender age. So pretty excited about that. Um, and then I guess finally just a reminder that tomorrow night in this room, well, tomorrow afternoon, between 3 and 5, we will be hosting a, a farewell party to Sue Dyer, who mm -hmm. has been with us for 22 years. And you're all invited. Great. Okay. So, um, The only other thing I have for unfinished business is the nutrition frame. And you should have gotten uh, information from Jim Kane. Yeah, he sent the yes. document. Yeah. Great. Does so, everybody have that or do you have that? Yep. Yeah. So he had passed along uh, the financial information. He also um, talked about the three vendors and the principal's recommendation. And then he also talked about the Universal Breakfast Program, which the three administrators provided feedback on that. I think the key is that the recommendation is to stick with CAFE, and if at any time in this contract um, there's a different feeling about the Universal Breakfast Program, CAFE is very willing to support that. So, um, I don't know if you have questions on that. Yeah, I, um, I think it's, it was pretty clear in the interviews that we want every kid to have a good breakfast. And, um, all three vendors made it really clear that they could provide that. And so I'm, a little, I'm kind of confused about the, um, the additional $110,000. because I thought they indicated that the, um, there was enough, there were enough subsidized meals that there wouldn't be an additional cost to provide uh, universal breakfast, uh, breakfast for everyone. So there wouldn't be any stigma attached to kids. Um, having breakfast, there wouldn't be any, any, any requirements that um, they could be qualified for period this lunch. It seemed like, so I'm surprised to see 110,000 additional dollars. Is that real money or does that get paid by the subsidy? I understood it differently that they would have had to calculate the cost because the, there would be an anticipated increase in the current use. Breakfast, right. and so that there are additional costs because you'd be serving additional food and spending right. additional time. Um, uh, but I understood that, like you did, that it would be it would be covered by the revenue generated right. from the program. So right. Right. I think um, because we hadn't bid out the project with the universal breakfast, the way I understand it is Jim asked them to come back and just to revise their bid with that extra cost in it. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't necessarily really, it, it kind of zeroes out. You can see that it says, oh, it's yeah. gonna be this much more money, but it zeroes out. So um, yeah, all three vendors did sort of say that it wasn't gonna have. Um, I think, you know, the, the other thing is the, you know, just not having heard from the administration. There's, I think um, Andy spoke at the time really clearly about how the schools really want to encourage families to be together and eat together and have their own supportive morning routines and that we don't want to stop that from happening. Um, and breakfast still is readily available to kids who don't yeah. have it. So I think 
there's, and then there's just the big elephant in the room of the busing <laughs> schedule, which just makes mornings, you know, at whatever school you're at, are really here. Since I wasn't there, I guess if somebody can clarify for me. What we have now, currently, is any child who wants to have breakfast can have breakfast, and you just pay a different price according if you're free and reduced lunch, right? Yes. Right, so students that get free and reduced lunch qualify for free breakfast. And free and reduced lunch means free breakfast. Students who don't qualify, that's 60% of our kids, kids who don't qualify for free reduced lunch pay, can pay for breakfast, I think it's a dollar. And that would be, that wouldn't be the case now they could go. They could get it without paying it off. Yeah, yeah. So the universe of breakfast was that there would be free breakfast for every child who shows up. So we're really only talking about the 40% more, uh, but those kids could get it before anyway. They get now. They have to pay for it. So what this would do would would mean they could get it for free without paying. So I'm confused. What would be a negative of offering that? It's not costing us any money. Well, there's there is there's there's it's no, logistics. There's no it's, negative. It's what it is is that difficult logistics. What, logistic what logistic. I think we we were talking about. So, so breakfast will still be offered and will be offered for free. I think what we were talking about in the context of that whole discussion was finding ways to really up the usage of the breakfast program because right now it's um, very, it's not as many kids as could possibly use it. And, uh, and so by making that program in the morning a lot larger, it has necessarily some, some logistical impacts and so that but so so we that, can't just take the universal breakfast and only end up feeding a third the kids that come to school or whatever number it is now you could it's you could. right now it's less than 20 percent i believe yeah. in the in the town come for come for breakfast regardless of how they're how, how they're paid for yeah. um so you, you could uh, just eliminate the pay so that that 20% or whatever percent it grows to is free. I think the, given the, the flexibility that the vendor has described, and, and particularly cafe services, because they're going to go to um, pads now, um, tablets for, check it, for um, checking kids off when they pick up their, when they get their food, and um, the ability to meet the, to meet the buses, and the ability to do a grab and grow and the flexibility, the statute is um, up until 10 a.m. breakfast can be, can be available to kids as a free breakfast. So there's a lot of flexibility there. And for kids that are late or kids that don't want to eat them, they can take it and then have this part of the snack as well. Right. And I think that uh, so no. there's a lot of data that show that, that proves pretty conclusively that kids that are well, they get good breakfast, so good nutrition, perform better, they behave better, and they're obviously healthier through their lives. And we've got, we had this letter that the, um, I think it was the Abbey people brought in from the, the assistant principal at St. Albans City School, which is probably similar to ours. So St. Albans has got about 7,000 people, and they've got two elementary schools, one in town and one in the St. Albans paper, and also had her first teaching job. And, um, she talked about adults commenting about the fact that students are eating calmly and socializing, that the uh, behavior in the cafeteria improved, the flexibility of the grab and grow cuts back on visits to the nurse's office because they're for crackers or wanting early snacks or kids being hungry. The, um, there's no disparity of options. There's no stigma with getting a free breakfast. And this, it's a PBIS school. And there, she's, she's indicating that the behavior, and this is a specific data, not just generally about nutrition specific to a Vermont school with PBIS that refers to drop significantly, significantly, and we know meeting the needs of hungry children changes their ability to concentrate and engage in learning is critical. So it just strikes me that this is really important and really valuable and is really going to help kids. Uh, it's hard to imagine that families that now are having breakfast together are going to stop having breakfast together. And I don't, I haven't, I mean, I'm not sure how, uh, well, I guess that's enough. I, just, I don't see it having a negative effect. I think the biggest problem is that you have to deal with the logistics. But it seems like the, the benefits of this program, and all of them, and we were all very excited about it when they described it at the, uh, at the, the uh, presentations, 
and they all indicated that they were able to do it and could be really flexible and could make it work, you know, would make it work in our schools. And we know from Cafe Services that they will. And um, Abbey Group is doing it already in St. Albans and Bennington, so they have, a, they have resolved a lot of problems. And, and a lot of the questions came up about implementation issues, and they were, they were pretty, pretty clearly resolvable. So, so I, think, I mean, as I said before, we really want kids to have a good start. We want them to have a good nutritional start today and then like, recognize that they're logistical problems. But I, you know, I think we need this program. It's a great opportunity to have universal breakfast for all these kids. Anecdotally, in, in my household, when we switched the schedule to have the younger kids come earlier, you know, that, that really changed things in terms of breakfast and being able to get it. And May going to school, because she's going earlier and, you know, not hungry because she's just gotten up. So I think that has had some impact on, or potential impact with families of younger kids going to school earlier, making it harder to get a good breakfast into them before they actually get out the door. I wasn't part of that, but David, maybe you know, in the schools in St. Albans or when Kathy Service talked about in those schools, did they have their own kitchen? Were they preparing their own food? And also, did they have their own place for kids to eat that wasn't also their gym and cafeteria and auditorium? Do you no, know if that was? I don't know. St. Yeah. Albans has their own cafeteria. They have their own cafeteria, so there's a place where kids just eat. It's not right. That's PE class at 835. And, and they have their own kitchen and service there that they're not running. They're not a shared kitchen like we have. So what do you okay. two do for breakfast now? Since you don't have your own they, it's the, they, they bring it over um, in a Cafe Services van, <clears throat> they have some partial preparation. They might heat some things up in the very small kitchen we have in the downstairs of Green Street. Um, then he rolls it in a cart into the gym and we serve them in there. Um, and as it, you know, you talk about logistics, it is, and, and, and it's, a, it's a race to get that done every day. Um, we have seen the number of kids expand even in my time there. There's probably, there's probably gone from 30 to about 60 every day that access that already. That's good. Um, so it is good, but it's a, then it's a very tight schedule because then they need to get back to academy, start preparing lunches. So, so one of the things that I think we had brought up with that whole, with the idea of breakfast is finding ways to use that sort of breakfast subsidy and apply it to the morning snack. And they were the healthy, you know, the snack. The healthy and, snack, yeah. And, you know, again, because I know that the snack preparation takes up a lot of staff time mm -hmm. and the cafe services people were like well we're really open to like doing that prep and then just and having so having that kind of stuff come back to them so I'm you know aside from the you know choosing the vendor you know I would hope that maybe we could find some ways to work with to ask a little bit more of them especially in the you know I don't want to see a, 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 a para who could be doing teaching, slicing vegetables instead. I mean, and I know that that happens every day, yeah. and it's fine, but I'd rather use that person to be doing something else and, and have a cafe service person, hmm. you know, dealing with that. And because, I guess because of the way the statute is, because breakfast can be extended to 10 o'clock, it gives you more space in the day to get food into kids in a way that, uh, I'm just thinking, Maybe be more creative about healthy. using that cafe services staff to get things done that need to be done. That would make a big difference. And I don't think it's going to change our costs that much at all. And they seem very open to trying to do it. I would think um, outside of the bidding process, I would love to see um, cafe services put that in writing and what that would look like. Mm -hmm. I know for us at Oak Grove, since we've gone to preparing meals at school, which is great, um, my one person that's there by herself till 10.30, is running until the 1030 person comes to help her get ready to serve lunch. Um, that means cafe services would probably have to find more personnel too. Yeah. I think we're very lucky as schools too to have our fresh fruits and vegetables grants and our healthy yeah. snack, mm -hmm. which means kids are getting that snack at 930 or 915, 915 and 10, I think yeah. about right. So we're, I feel very fortunate yeah. to work in this district and be able to say that too for kids. And I think um, just so you know, or like when our kids come off the bus, we have, we know which kids want breakfast every day, even when that bus arrives late, and we have those breakfasts. <coughs> and we have them trade up and ready to go, and they tend to eat in their classroom. Even yeah, as we said, kids are getting yeah. up for class. 
So, so I, I can say from Oak Grove, I, I could be wrong, but I don't feel like any of our kids are missing breakfast, whether it's at home or at school, that they are, regardless where we go with the program. But That's good. So I, I think based on the administration recommendation in the, in the stated goal that the district should do everything it can to ensure that every child has breakfast either at home or at school, principals see that. Yeah. And so um, we know that CAFE is willing to work with us. Um, that's the recommendation for the contract. So I would ask that we um, support that, that recommendation. I, I don't want to do that. I want to go with, I want us to have the universal. So I move that we um, accept the CAFE services bid with the universal breakfast. I think it's too important to. So you want to disregard the administration? Yes, it does. Yes. Is that the next motion the second vote? Or second, we have discussion? Yeah. Ask a question. Ask a question. Can the administration explain why you don't want it? I mean, I, it doesn't, I don't, I can't quite wrap my head around it except for this logistics. Is that really? Well, um, I think if we want to do everything we can to, to ensure that no student comes to school, arrives at school, or goes to first period of class, Without eating, we well, would guarantee that every kid has has a good meal. Ideally, um, you know, it's 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 with it's with the dollars. Ideally, it's with the parents because we know that kids spend far too little time, my included, with their parents. So we want everything we can to encourage that. And I'm and I'm not arguing that this would this would take that away. We just it's, as far as what we encourage, that I think is the most ideal. Um, one concern I have besides the logistics, and certainly if, if there's a way to make this free for the people, I'm all for it. Mm. Um, the issue is, um, I think grab and go, grab and go and, and nutritious breakfast are not synonymous in my mind from what I've seen. And I don't think it's, it's like camping services, it's going to be the same with, with whomever gets the bid. Because when you get one, I don't know exactly what it costs, but you add in the reimbursement state with that breakfast cost, but if milk costs 65 cents, and if you drive a dollar, um, there's, there's not a whole lot of room there to, to, to buy quality products. A lot of what goes out with the grab and go is a, a small, I think it's a four ounce or a six ounce container of fruit juice, high fructose corn syrup. This got nothing to do with good nutrition. Anything that has high fructose corn syrup it, it is not nutritious by definition. Um, and if they can, if we can incorporate our our snack program, healthy snack program with, with them to support that, I think that would be, would be great to ensure that, um, you know, that we can continue that. Um, you know, I think that would be wonderful. We don't, we don't serve anything with, with um, um, high fructose corn syrup on that. Um, I'm pretty sure we're, we are um, GMO free in that program. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of things like that, We've, we've been able to avoid and take a uh, really high ground on nutrition. Um, and I'm not sure, I'm skeptical that in this program we would do that. They didn't, um, I remember them mentioning yogurt and I can't remember the other things they said would be in the grab and go, but it definitely wasn't, it wasn't just. Well, just a lot of yogurts that are served are, are Yeah, they have sugar. Yeah, yeah, all of them have sugar. Yeah, in high amounts of sugar. So, um, and all sugar is half fructose, so whether it's high fructose or not, you know, they still yeah. get that. But they, they talk about the um, increasing student participation rates, so there's really no question about that. And, um, and then again, the, the improvement in behavior and, and achievement and in kids' diets. And I just think that, that yeah. I mean, overruns those concerns. I'm not disagreeing, but I, one thing I, mean, I was cautioned is when a letter like that, when, when A schools. It's, it's pretty good advertising. Many schools says, well, we did this. I knew a principal one time who they had a dramatic decrease in their, in their school discipline, a middle school principal, and he says because of the banners we put up in school. Um, you know, we had a big decrease a couple of years ago in general assistant principal, 50% decrease in our office referrals. And it was a lot of things that we did. It's big. It was, it was <laughs> gem. We, we could have said that one all was, it was this or was that. Um, uh, again, I'd be skeptical. It's I mean, not, I'm I mean, not this, this letter is specific right. to St. Albans, but there's research, right. clear data that indicates that good nutrition improves behavior and performance. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. What absolutely. She may be saying. absolutely. That's not controversial. So, so I guess, so I'm trying, so I'm trying to look for a way to 
to, to, to find a solution. Because one of the things about that is also recommended is that, um, well, A, this, it's a five-year contract that's renewed year to year. So there's, with at least two meetings with CAFE services and the administration mm -hmm. and the board. So have we've done that prior? We've, we've met, with, yes, we, well, in my time, yes, we've had interim. For five or for three? No, we've done the year-to-year -year thing, but also we've had meetings with CAFE services, and as I recall, we talked about increasing participation in breakfast. It's a, it's a discussion we've had a lot. So I am just wondering if, if um, over the summer, in working with the vendor, you can maybe explore some ways that, which might include them having another staff member, to do, to do things like have them be more helpful around the healthy snacks, um, you know, and and seeing and, and, and the pricing around breakfast, um, working it so that so that we can offer free breakfast to all students. And if it gets to a point where there's logistical issues, well then they'll have to be worked out. But it would be nice to go into the fall saying, okay, every kid can have free breakfast. And then if you're like overwhelmed, well then obviously <laughs> it's something. But I don't I don't know that people's behavior is going to change that radically. But I, but I do think they did offer, you know, some flexibility in, in their staff in helping prepare healthy snacks um, in, in all the schools. And I think that that is something to grab on. So would that start to yeah. get you yeah. towards? Yeah. Yeah. Mark, because, I, just a know, question. I have a practical question. The is the, David, is the issue the bidder? Your, would your point change who we want to award to? No. Because so, I, I don't see where in this letter from Jim it says, I mean, the, the paragraph says the administrator does not recommend implementing a universal breakfast program this time. That doesn't mean we can't offer them the contract, right? right. Exactly. Oh, no. The, the, it seems as though the decision as to whether to offer the universal breakfast is an internal issue, and the awarding of the contract is an, an external issue. Who are we going to pick among the three? Well, they're separate issues. One is a policy. Are we going to offer... So what, that's so, the policy, and then the other is award a contract to implement the policy. Right, so we could agree and award the contract and have further discussion about universal breakfast as an element of the contract, right? Is that and include healthy snack, perhaps, in that. As well. I understand, universal breakfast was almost a cost neutral. Right, it, it is. And one of the vendors mentioned the fact that the breakfast they provided for us Tasty was using USDA provided eggs, ham, and cheese at no cost. Um, and in de facto, right now, don't we have a, a universal breakfast program, except the name only, where any kid that's hungry in the morning is going to get fed something? Well, we charge. We charge those who don't qualify for free use lunch. Yeah, so um, right. there will be a charge, but the food is available if someone is, is hungry. Right, yeah. I mean, I think one difference for us would be Right now, I mean, you have to, breakfast is closed at the beginning of school, right. with exceptions, like when that bus comes in late, we, right. we'll hold it. We, we hold breakfast and do things to get a small amount of kids breakfast. Mm -hmm. To, I think what, one, can, one concern that we would have is if we open that till at 10 o'clock and, and do a grab and go and have to figure out a system to get breakfast to classrooms or have kids come down who, we have a real tardy problem in school. Lots of kids come tired of working all the time, but to have them come down at 9.30 for breakfast, or 10 o'clock for breakfast, we have to figure out how to send like breakfast to them. Do we Those have logistics, to I think we would, we would find to be pretty disruptive to, to the operation in, in, you know, of school and to interfere with the academic. Uh, and why are you saying until 10? I thought that was just like the time frame that they could do it by law. But couldn't each school make a decision at what time you were going to close breakfast? I heard something about 10 o'clock. But I thought so that was like 10 is when the, the, they can serve food and be reimbursed up to 10 o'clock. Yeah. So if they delivered snacks around to all the classrooms or, or that was lunch lunches around 930, that would be included in the subsidy. Yeah, or we, so so we could, that doesn't mean that we can't say in each school, this is the time that we close it down. So well, but if, you, if what you're saying by universal breakfast is that we're doing pretty much what we're doing now, um, only it'll be free for everyone. And we'll try to find ways to incorporate snack, healthy snack with, with cafe services. That's, that's fine. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's, I think that's it. Yeah. Yeah. And I, 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 mean, I know it's a 
a pain, but I can't imagine that you wouldn't be able to work it out. Given all the other things that are way more complicated than you work out. Well, it's well, just, it's, you know, it's going to be a, a hassle to get it established. But well, that's if not we change hassle. the culture so parents are aware that there's food, they're going to get their kids, they might just get their kids there earlier because they know they get something to eat. Because one of the things, another thing they point out is that there's, uh, particularly with kids, a lot of lower income families, there's real, real pressure to get nutritional food, to buy a piece of food and to get it to the kids. So they may just see that as a great, exactly great opportunity to, yeah. to get a, a good meal at school, another good meal at school, and, and to get it's on time. I mean, I, I, just want, I want us to try it because we know that it's going to help the kids if we can get them good breakfast. Right. I think well, we, we, as long as we can say that there's a shut off. Yeah, I think, I think, I mean, I, I mean, I have to, because what I say is that it's not for us to tell you how to do it, yeah, exactly. but it's just to say, um, so, so let's just step back, because the first thing we want to do is, we have a recommendation to award the contract to cafe services, and so I'm wondering if we have a motion we're going to make. But what is the contract? Does it include? It, no, we have to say what it includes. Could I, I, I know this is out of order, but I think before you approve universal, Breakfast. I mean, I think what we do now, if we could open that up and be free to all kids, that would be awesome. I mean, we'd be totally supportive of that. Um, my experience with cafe services this year is that <coughs> the time in my school was a it was a cost increase. So even though they've talked about this, if we're asking for more personnel just at Oak Grove or even Green Street, mm -hmm. that the board first find out what that increase yeah. is because I, I think there will be a cost increase for personnel. Yeah, because right now we have one single person that comes to do breakfast. I think if you're going to have open it up to everyone, you'd have to have two servers because they're going out the street. Eat. So for them to do snacks or any of that, that would mean someone is at academy prepping yeah. lunches. Yeah. So I think that, okay. I don't know how they would absorb that cost. I I think it may like be worthwhile to do that, but they were, the, the four men who run the, the right operation right. were, were right. absolutely clear that they they would make it happen and that, you know, they'd be glad to and they'd work it out. So, I mean, it, it kind of would fall on them to, to provide the, the resources to make it happen. Where is the actual contract or whatever that we're awarding? What's the word for that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe we need to make some out of this. So what does it say? They provide what? Because I also think the healthy staff is, you know, it's good to have it written down what we're expecting. And if they're saying they're excited about helping with healthy snack, it sounds like all three principles. Well, I mean, and I think, that too, I think it's actually something to be negotiated within this number, which is 475-361. But didn't they put in a bid for X service when they wrote their number? No. Well, they can't. They can't change the the prices they're offering. As they said, they do universal lunch or universal breakfast. And that's what it's going to be. Fun. But they did specifically talk about being able to um, to coordinate with. Obviously, they wanted the bit, so they would be very, very. Uh, yeah. Well, they all, everybody said they would do everything. Yeah. Well, they got everything. So. So the difference would be um, the difference in the price of the contract of uh, adding $110,236 to the cost of the contract. Though they're projecting that your participation rates and the reimbursement would cover that. So when you, mm -hmm. so, so we would be awarding a larger contract. Um, they're saying that it's cost neutral. Most of that's going to come through. Yeah. Um, and I think since we have an ongoing relationship with this vendor, I think that there's opportunity to then say, well, what is it that you can do? And I think that if, if it comes in, is, I, I, I think it means that there'll be another negotiation of what they can do with that dollar value. Mm -hmm. um, well, they said they were basically receptive to any negotiations that would come to contract right. to at least. And again, you know, it's it's a year to year. The, con the contracts are done by year. I guess I would, say, I would want Jim Kane to uh, be able to explain to us the implications. Yes. Yeah. So um, the timing on this, if we are going to. With, we pro we'll probably need to bring this to another rather short meeting some morning very soon if we feel like we don't have enough information. 
to vote now, okay. um, which would be fine. And uh, but it would have to be, I'd say, within the next week. If that's has the high school done the they did they did it they, did. Did it, yeah. they approved cafe. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> how about we get with Jim and see if we can schedule a short meeting and talk about what the cost implication of this would be mm -hmm. is. Um, and with cafe services there as well. So that we can know if that I would <laughs> Well, I think we should maybe talk with Jim too about the school by school situations. You know, Jen seems pretty concerned about the impact on labor and making sure that that doesn't that that's part of the commitment of Cafe Service resources. I, but I, I'd like to make it clear: it's it, it seems as though we are bound to determine to go with cafe services because they have a strong history. All the administrators want to keep them as the vendors. So that's not really the issue, right? Yeah, it's the, more the, the cost. The issue is the cost, and that's something we need to straight out with Jim. So I think it's pretty clear what we need to do. Right. The other thing I feel funny about is voting to, to say that we're, is that what you're saying, Peter, we should vote? No. Okay. I, so I, I don't think we need to vote, but I think it's pretty clear where that the resolution is not about the vendor, the resolution is about the program. Right. Right. I just and feel like I need to know that, exactly what progress. we're voting on and accepting yeah. it. Sorry, because of... No, you're not, you're not voting. We're not voting. I know. But <laughs> yeah. when, we, when we meet with Jim, to me it's not what Margaret just said, of just a, a question of the cost. It's a question of exactly what's included in the contract right. and what we're expecting. That's why I'd say let's have Jim provide that the implications of that, the information about that, then you can vote on that. And how would we get um, reassurance from the cafe services that they would provide the resources? From Jim. Jim will contact them. Okay. And I think we anticipated okay. a short meeting based on the being back with the vendors to include the universal breakfast program to see if they needed to Well, he had, he had, he had, that's what this was. Yeah. This yeah. document was yeah. the result of Jim going back and asking each of the three vendors what about breakfast. So. So, uh, to be continued soon. Um, so this will be a, meeting, a, a morning meeting within the next week. Yeah. And we all are available to do that. Yes. Yeah. Like, Depending on the morning. I have, I have <laughs> lacrosse camp for one kid at 9 o'clock every day. What you going to feed? Okay. Um, it might be early. Okay, so um, on the agenda, committee report. Um, the last, there's two more things. Uh, one is the solar project update. It's on the agenda. Did you have something? Oh, no, he couldn't come. Okay, so Sorry. to be continued. <laughs> so it probably will be, if not our next meeting. So finally, um, the summer schedule. Oh wait, the solar guy, you are going to get him to come some point soon? Yeah. That was the request, right? No, we're probably in the fall. Yeah, probably in the fall. Um, uh, I, was, I spoke to, um, I was up at the VSBA retreat was a week ago today, and um, I talked to Harry Frank, who came down to the essentials of the school board. Mm -hmm. um, what was it called? The essentials? Training. Yeah. Yeah. Work. And um, about coming down and doing it with all of us, and he, and I asked him what days he might be available, and he, he had uh, Tuesday the 17th, 16th of July or Wednesday the 17th of July um, to do that training for us. Okay. Which would be separate from when we get together with the, everybody and do goals. But, but th that meeting would be before we do the goal setting meeting, right? Yeah. Yeah. It would make sense for yeah. it to be, yes. What were the dates, David? 16th, 16th and 17th of July. Yeah. And the 17th would be our normal third Tuesday <laughs> meeting anyway, even though we don't do normals in summer. Henry Frank? Harry. Frank. Is it Harry? Yeah. Yeah. It's Harry. Sure. Yeah. Henry is Henry. All right, thanks. Would he come? <laughs> He'd come either during the day or at night. Yeah, at our leisure. And and that was so specifically. What is he doing? He'll do a well. He talked to you and figured out. Yeah. <laughs> um, a training for the board on the essentials of school board. Um, I forget exactly the title. Yeah. But so the particularly in terms of. Um, I was thinking about the terms of community engagement, which we've talked a lot about needing to do going forward, and that's one of the things that they focus on and have a lot of resources for. Okay. So I had talked to Harry as well, right? um, and um, I wasn't sure what your meeting schedule was, so um, 
I'd thrown out August 7th, but um, and I haven't heard back from him yet. But if he can do the 17th and people are available in July, uh, it would be good to get him down here. Um, do you guys want to do that during the day or in the evening? It's, he's coming from Montpelier, so it would be easier if it were in the day, but I don't know if, how, if that's, you know, how possible that is for him. That's okay with me on either the 16th or the 17th to do it during the day. Yeah, the 16th is bad. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, I was hoping to leave for that whole week, so, but I don't have it's a schedule yet. Yeah. So it's so the July. next, <coughs> like the next week, or is it? It's the next month. It's in our um, So, yeah, so why don't we say the 17th? Um, so, we'll, so can people do it the 17th? Yeah. Like, uh, if we said 10.30? That would be really, that would be great for him. Where? So yeah, can we have comfy. <laughs> You're saying July 17th. Yeah. yeah. Can we have this room? Mm -hmm. this, room? this comfortable room, which this, we know right. has an this excellent air conditioning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so if we did something at 10, 1030 and then till 1, okay. that's a lunch, that sort of thing. Okay, this great. This would not be goal setting, it would be just what he talked training. to me about was roles and responsibilities of board right. and oh, administrators right. and also then specific topics like community outreach mm -hmm. or direct. Um, um, and so then we do a goal setting usually in August. And I, I would recommend if we can do August 7th. Okay. Because the next week the administrators are away. Um, and then if we waited until the later meeting in August, I think it gets too cold. Yeah, it jams up really fast. Um, well, guys, make me feel like my summer's gone. Are you here, Peter? Um, well, where did the summer go? Yeah. My yellow's still sick. Was having a hard time. Yeah, we're supposed to. That's you said the seventh round. Yeah, it's in Chesterfield, and they have so many snow days. I was I was tentatively planning on not being here. So. I was hoping to be in Illinois on the summer. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm out of town, but if you, if we did it after the, in the afternoon or evening, I could, I could do it on the 7th. Is the 8th or 9th better? Clearly not for Jeff. No. I don't know, I haven't scheduled it yet, so I guess you can. It's just, we have to be back by the 19th now for that high school sports stuff. Life has changed. <laughs> <laughs> Those of us who lives are ruled by high school sports. But. So, Jill, you're saying that the seventh isn't good, but it doesn't get better, right? <laughs> well, pretty much. It'd be a good summary of life, I think. How about yeah. a little bit before the seventh? Like the How about in that week, like the fifth or the sixth? No, I'm, I'm out of town. Go with Peter, because he's scheduled for sure, and I'll just play around. We may, it all depends on all sorts of things. Okay, so why don't we say the seventh again, maybe in the middle of the day? Well, I'm in uh, Westford, Mass. So you until okay. around noon. So if we could do it later, that'd be good. I mean, I don't want to. How about two? Two o'clock. Yeah, two would be great. Yeah, it's over. Swimming is over, but then. I guess seven. Yeah, two two o'clock. Okay, Where? now that does conflict with here. the meeting that's happening here that day, so we'd have to find a difference. Or we could, could we do it at the central office? Mm -hmm. We could do that at the central office. Which also is air conditioning. So it's really nice. Two o'clock. Okay. Everyone's air conditioning. Nice, you're doing so. What day are we doing now? Seven? Seven. Seven. Two p.m. the seventh, and ten thirty a.m. the seventeenth of July. Excellent. And so, so is Harry supposed to confirm with you on that? Uh, he wants. To, well, he wanted Margaret to contact him. You know, he likes to do it through the chairs. Yeah. Okay, I'll, cool. I'll just let me. Okay, yeah. great. We're looking at Somebody send me his email, and we'll set uh, that I'll, up. Yeah, I'll we'll send that up. Excellent. Thank you. Um, okay. Can I just comment real quickly on the the reports that Jim set out on the Honeywell stuff sure. and the and the, uh, the Academy School Boiler? The, the main thing is that Mark and I need to meet with Jim because I have a ton of questions about both of them. And then we'll come back to the board with yeah. something the next time we meet. Yeah, I figured it was a thing that the facilities you guys had to yeah, so Mark, Mark, before we leave tonight, let's just figure out when we can meet with Jim. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah, what? 47 pages. So, so, four pages. so, so, so if, 
Nobody has anything else. I need a agreement to go into executive session to discuss personnel issues. Okay, will we rise to it? Rise. We enter, 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 en